Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 of The Front. Now where we left off last time we just built a hammer and uh, we got ourselves some clothes or armor we should call it and we got ready to make a lot of new stuff that was the furnace, the chemist bench we also got the option to make some improvements to a weaponry and most importantly the space-time beacon which will become an interesting little addition because it enables you to get extra resources of uh, different qualities along uh, with facing NPCs that drop very useful items sometimes. So let's get on into it. Let's see, what do we need to make the space time beacon? We have the ether shards, we have the fiber, and we have stone wood, so it's basically very easy to make items. We just need a bit more wood, a bit more stone. Now, since it's been a few days, or at least one and a half, since we last checked the trash here, maybe we could do that again. Oh, it's still not replenished. Now, I did show you that one in the first episode, that one, and then the one down a bit by the fire here at the beach. There's actually two more. There's one in the house further south. There's a trash bin in that house, as far as I remember, and then there's a boat here with uh, a crate as well. And they have fairly useful items always as well, so it's quite handy to get hold of it. I don't want to bother with these two guys right now because they're still a bit too strong. I find that they've been easy to take out with you know bow and arrow but right now I really just want to get going and, and making the beacon because it reward it's more rewarding in the long run. Uh, so we may maybe we'll go down to those two guys and we're gonna test out the follower. Uh, but first things first, beacon, and then we take the other stuff as along the way. We're gonna need a lot more wood, a lot more stone. Oops. And of course, you know, a lot of these things you can do fairly much faster when you're not sting talking to someone or giving advice, playing through this way. So don't let yourself be discouraged. I am sure you can do this uh, faster and more efficient than I come off here as being able to, so no worries. How much wood do we have? 50? I think that's close to being enough, isn't it? Yeah. Good. So the trick is, it actually matters a little bit where you place this. So first of all, we might as well get it started. Uh, it has to be inside the base perimeter. And we can't have a flag at the same time. So the point of this flag, I never really got into that because it wasn't uh, needed yet. Now it will, if you play on a PvP server or uh, getting raided, this will matter. So basically, what it is is you can drop fiber into the inventory bar and then you can submit it, and the flag will kind of repair itself. Um, as you can see, the dubious structures within the range of the space-time beacon will be repaired every hour. So if you have items, uh, you know, literally fiber placed in here, it will use that fiber to uh, repair your base automatically, which is a nice little thing so you don't have to keep track of did I repair that wall, did I repair that wall? But the thing is, now that we have this one, it will replace the flag. So can I destroy this without destroying my base? Absolutely. Goodbye. So now we have the beacon. I can't venture too far from that point if I want to keep the original. I think, does it have a little bit more range? It might have, but I can't remember to be honest. Oh yeah, a, lo a lot more range. <laughs> so, the thing is, the point of the beacon is it's a little mini event. Um, and it's if you succeed in that event, you will be rewarded with items, resources, uh, recipes for new items, and so on. And it does so by... You have the beacon here, for example. 
Let's see. I'm just going to place and then we can talk about it. I just want to see. Mm. Because there's a lot of little things about this. Which will become apparent once I show it. And maybe here. We're going to go here. Good. See this little trap though. And this is where you put the resources in so you can auto repair. But it says receive supplies. Now I'm not going to click it yet. <laughs> and I can't even, to be honest. I have to wait 10 minutes. So it's a timed event. And for each round it gives you... I will get some supply pack here. Level 1 supply pack. I will get a level 1 blueprint. And Eva shots. So in 10 minutes when I do that. Uh, I will have to have what's called a creature lure. And it has to be a certain amount of way from from this beacon. Now, because this is early on, I didn't really pre-plan this. But uh, along the way, it will become easier for you. And again, it's easier to show. But the thing is, you're going to place a, a creature lure, and this creature lure will spawn creatures that will try and run for this beacon, and they're going to attack it and try to destroy it. And if you don't uh, destroy the creatures, they will destroy the lure, or it won't be destroyed, but you won't get the mats, you won't get the reward. So, in order to prevent them from doing that, you might think, initially, yeah, you could fight them off uh, by hand. But it, when you get into the higher rounds, this is called round one. I think actually already around four, bigger NPCs will spawn, they will kill you fairly rapidly, and they will um, destroy your event. So what you have to do is you have to build a maze that will destroy the NPCs while they try to get up to the beacon. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a maze with spikes because the NPCs are designed that way that if there's a little bit of an edge they will run into it if they don't have that much... Oh yeah, novice protection is over because I'm now on level 10. So yeah, um, it, this will have a uh, significance in regards to dying and respawning and where your equipment is. Cops run is a thing. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, back to followers. So yeah, NPCs will run into spikes. And uh, if you have enough spikes and the maze is long enough, you can basically kill them off. Or they can kill themselves off by running into spikes trying to get to the beacon. So this is what we're gonna be making now. Just to show you the event. Um, let's see here. Oops. We, uh, it's on the tech. And then we have put spike barrier. And we're gonna need a lot of this. So we might as well make, say like 50 room. Use all the fiber. And then we start getting wood. Um, and it's worth it. It really is because uh, items in the front are tiered. So an axe is not always an axe. Uh, or how can I explain it? No, this levels does grey, green, blue, purple, uh, legendary, and exotic. Uh, and that goes for both tools and items, or weapons. And you can get these recipes, or even the items, by doing this beacon event. So it's definitely worth it. Let's just get some mats here and get this thing going. There we go. How much stone do we have? I see. It's slowly beginning to collect resin as well. Resin will become needed for recipes soon. Go. Uh, we'll get these four.
So uh, yeah, I guess I. I mean, in my opinion, this little uh, beacon event is a nice touch because it, yeah, it kind of gives you an, a little bit of control over the raids or one type of raid event. Uh, so you get the uh, here and now uh, kind of a emergency action. And then you have the encounters with NPCs, like the guy you saw here. Actually, there's a quarry behind here with some fairly big guys and guys with guns, which I'm not able to kill right now. So yeah, you get the control part that's uh, you can that you can pre-plan for, pre for, and then you have the uh, ad hoc kind of missions in the beacons. Now it's day again. I just want to see if that trash thing is replenished. Then we get an idea of how much time it takes to respawn. Oh yeah, so you know, the longer you leave it, the more it uh, re re yields or rewards. So now it was just sand, so we're gonna leave it. Get back to it later. So. I think the wood is the, the rope is done, so we can start get getting uh, spikes. So quick, quick calculations. We say sixty. Yep. Just adjusting stuff here. <laughs> that house is looking really. It's almost like, you know, one of those big housing projects that just gets dumped because it, the economy fails. <laughs> well, enough depressing talk. <laughs> so, okay. Um. Yeah, actually, I do have to make that creature loop first because I can't remember the distance. It has a fixed distance. You can't just place it anywhere. And it's this one. Stone and iron. Ah, okay. So I need iron. Well, that actually makes me want... Oh, look, I'm hungry and thirsty, so now I'm dying. So what we're going to do is quickly grab this. Get ourselves back up. And he took two berries, she took the berries in one go there. Uh, we still have the meat. And maybe soon we should be able to make, I can't make that yet, I actually found one, uh, one round. Uh, it's called a humidifier, you know, water collector. Uh, which will become fairly useful. I actually feel like I have to go out and get those crates because they might have iron in them actually. So that guy is there. I mean, I think the spear might be enough to tackle them. Let's try it. The worst thing that can happen is I die. Oh, he looks mad. Yeah, okay, I can do that with spear. Oh, see, she does fairly amount of damage. But, we want. Let's see, there's the talent books I mentioned in uh, episode 1, which also provides an argument uh, for killing these guys. All this is non-lootable, it's merely decoration, which is a bit, uh, it's a bit sad, but maybe it'll, it'll grow on the game eventually. I think it's a question of balance as well. Equip crate. So she had concrete wall and stone stairs. Not very useful, but you know, three items, so in that sense, they are useful. Oh, look at that guy. See, the problem is, I need to get this one now, or he is gonna kill me. Ah, oh, 
Sí. That was close. <laughs> They do a lot of damage, even though I have my armor on. I mean, oh, come on, man. So we're gonna eat that. She took two in one go again. So there's another two boxes, I don't think. Nope, there's nothing yet. I don't know if it will be, but... So we have the boat here. And this will be the same for every spawning point. There will be some kind of point of interest like this w that will have uh, respawnable items. So it's not like you have to spawn at East too. Um, you can spawn at any of the points and have the same stuff, kind of. Uh, not necessarily the same stuff in the crates, but the same option to collect items. So, and the trash basket. Ah, too bad. You know, it, it can contain iron or other stuff as well. Uh, sometimes I found like 100 iron in one uh, trash can, which was very, a very nice addition to not having to. And of course my battery ran out. Yeah, it was a very nice addition to not having to farm that much iron. Iron shovel. That's actually a very nice thing to find now because I can't even make iron yet. But that doesn't prevent me from using it. So uh, this will actually allow me to drop this. And just use the iron shovel instead for, you know, uh, that's for digging in this, the dirt and getting oil. Let's see what this has now. Might not be more. No, still just sand. Leave it. Oh yeah, as you see in the top left corner, it says supply, supply beacon, go to space time beacon. This means the event is ready. But since we haven't got a creature lure yet, we can't start it. And to get a creature lure, we need to build a stone furnace. This you make here. Uh, yeah. With stone and fiber. And it says, oh, you, you're missing the mats. And you're going, no, I don't. Well, it's because you still have to put it over here. So we're going to go that. Now we can make it. Then we have the option to make the manual miner. So if you are in a place where it's... You can't really seem to find one of the uh, types of ore you need. You can actually just build this. And I'm saying just because you still need iron ingots to make it. So, yeah, we need to find iron. And uh, unfortunately, that's a bit of a, a pain in the uh, behind here, in this spawn location. Uh, again, remember to grab the item, and then you can place it. Yeah, smelting like that. And like I showed in uh, the previous episode with the fire, as you can see, you can use the follower here. And this is where the wood or fiber goes, and as you can see, it highlights the item you need to you need to put here. So we're gonna make iron eventually. We don't have any ore or anything, so we can't make anything yet. Uh, has it changed? Yeah, okay, that's actually new. I think this is an update because I didn't notice this. In previous, hmm. Let's try that. We're gonna take all of the stone and see what comes out of this because maybe that will save us some. Oh, yeah, we need to apply wood, activate, and craft. So let's see what comes out of this because that will actually be a nice little addition. So. I mean, there's a lot of lead and a lot of copper here, but no iron, actually. So... And, uh, yeah. 
If you then go to East 1, there will be uh, a lot more iron, but maybe not so much lead or something like that. So yeah, it's always a compromise to keep it balanced. Let's go back. I haven't got uh, an idea how much, how long this takes, so just gonna have a look. Oh, it made, it didn't make that much iron, to be honest. That's too bad. <coughs> It did make some copper, a few iron. So I mean, if you gathered a lot of stone, might as well just keep this running. And I will take you guys to see this area over here where the NPCs are. And see if we can sneak a little bit of iron from them. Oh, I'm thirsty. I am thirsty. I should be... See if I can soon make humidifier. Where is it? Basic. This is not good. And if you're in a sweat like this, it might make sense to actually um, go get some berries. There we go. Ring collector. We're gonna make that because we can't go around being thirsty. Rain collector, we need... Oh, we need iron for that. Okay, we're gonna go and get some berries. <laughs> Eat. And the berries will be these bushes here. Hopefully it won't take too long. Come on. Ah, you know what? I think we might actually need to. Question is if I need to pick them or if I can sickle them. Something tells me I might need to pick them. Nah, shouldn't matter. It's typical, isn't it? Once you need something desperately. Oh, now the signal died or destroyed. <laughs> Once you need something desperately, you won't get it. <laughs> ah, starting to get a few berries here. And this is all good, it's not wasted time because you still need the fiber anyways and the mucus. I mean, you're really gonna need a lot of mucus, so this is just fine. It's just the timing wasn't perfect. But it shouldn't have to be anyways, I guess. There we go. And as you might notice, we are getting some seeds as well. And these uh, will of course enable you to have a little farm with uh, plants and stuff so you don't have to venture off too far to get uh, all this stuff see I'm already hungry again whoops better eat them all and the time does um, stack so if I eat all the berries, but I haven't really figured out yet or checked if it stacks, you know, perfectly or if it's so, sort of, you only get half the time for the second berry. We can uh, do a little test next time, we get a lot of berries. Let's see how that works. Because of course that would be more efficient just to eat it all in one go. Looks so empty now. Okay. Huh. Just one more barrier to see. So it's now we have four. So if we press, it says seven seconds. That was eleven, twelve. Yeah, it does stack. It would have it appears. Yeah, a little bit of bug here. Can't really grab the. Uh, the bush. That sounded wrong.
So I th think the guy up here, if I'm lucky, he's not wearing a gun or using a gun. That guy there. There is a few gun guys and they will kill you very fast. The thing is, it you know, it sh I make it sound like it's uh, you really have to be careful. Oh, the world will end. If you die and you respawn the same place, you have a little bit of grace time to get your stuff and be and move before they uh, spot you again. Let's see where we can if we can get close to this guy. He's level 18. You see, if I don't time them right, I will actually... I'm in risk of dying fairly fast. And since we don't have our first meter in order, our healing amount is quite slow. It's gonna get this... I don't have a match, but like This one, I thought, oh, this must be some kind of amazing... Uh, it's just stone! But yeah... Might as well grab it. I thought, oh, tungsten, it does have something. I didn't get that the last time. Nice. I guess that's for further down the road when you need batteries. So you will get a, a opportunity later on to make engines and batteries and stuff, and then you can make cars. Uh, that's quite f uh, interesting, and I l really like that part of the game, uh, which will hopefully make farming a lot more easier when you get down to that point. Oh, the watermelon actually made us quite satiated. That was good. I just want to show you some of these crazy guys down here. If we can spot them. Oh yeah, look at that. That guy. He has an iron shield that he will hide behind. So they're not impossible to kill, especially when you get guns. You can, because they're brain dead, <laughs> you can stand up here, for example, and then shoot down on him, and he will Still try to go all the way around very slowly while you pick him off. Steel shield, they're called. There's a truck. Uh, I haven't really. You can't uh, steal it or drive it. Oh, look! Because she's. Okay, so this is what happens when you die. So I. What I remember was that I could actually spawn at my own place, but we're gonna choose this one. And then we're gonna spawn right next to her, and you might say, oh my god, that's shitty. But no, it's not. Because... Um, the crate is right here. Just press more, and everything is back to where it was before. And actually, because she's still damaged... We gotta... See, here is some iron. And be mindful of that guy over there. There's also a guy with a pistol, like there. So let's see if we can steal this iron without getting noticed. No, oh, what a timing! <laughs> I get it. So the acro range is not that far, thankfully. And. This quarry, where you find these iron, they have a lot of iron. As you can see, I got 18. This truck you can destroy as well. It won't explode or anything. It will drop a bag of... Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's just, you know, old stuff. Falls apart. Then we got this. Wreckage, yeah. Iron, nice. And these were ingots. So that's like getting six iron. Whoops, that's a gun guy. And he spotted us. So yeah, the aggro range was quite far actually. Uh, and they, eventually they will, you know, give up and leave you. But for now, I think it's better to just get uh, out of here. Uh, good. 
So how much did we get? We got, this is equal to 9 ingots, and we got 3, that's 12. I think that might be enough for the, uh, for the lure, or the, what was it we were going to build? We were going to build, oh yeah, this one needs 6, the lure needs 5, that's enough for both of them, that's good. So we're going to drop this in, we're going to drop in the, we don't get that. Oh, we got another 10 here. And, oh yeah, the good thing is, you know, these all things, if you're not going to use the raw material, there are some recipes that will use the raw materials. You might as well use the furnace itself as a, a chest. So you can just leave it here. And then when you come back, you can just drop in the uh, fire, or the wood. And, no, oh yeah, if you drop in like 200 wood, it will burn it all to the ground if you don't stop it and take it out. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna make some ingots here. That will take some time. It takes around 9-10 seconds each. So what else do we need for the... For this one? We need stone. And we have enough ether. That's good. Here we need wood and ether. We don't have any wood, do we? Well, we have in the, f in the furnace. Maybe that's enough for both. Well, just gonna grab a bit more. We always need wood. See the music again. That's because night is coming. So we still got around 10 minutes left, uh, roughly. Hopefully there will be enough time to show you the the creature event or the beacon event. Let's see how this is going. Just gonna grab this and um you know what? I'm gonna cancel this. When you cancel stuff it will of course finish the one it's already doing. And then you just stop the fire and take the wood. I'm gonna leave this, take the stone, carbon and salt. So basically just keeping it all in here. Uh, let all might put in. There we go. So, let's see. It's this table. We're gonna uh, make the lure. Do we not have enough stone? Oh man. Okay, we'll find that. And we need ingots. So the way to split stuff. Let me see if I remember correctly. You hold down control. You mouse wheel click and move. Nope, that's not right. You control click, right click, yeah. Hold control, right click and drag, and then this comes up. Took me quite a time to find out how to do that. So, drop that in. That's just stone. So control, right click and drag to split. Mm, maybe just grab them. Uh, 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 there's a one over here. I mean, you might think, oh, this is so much excessive with this amount of uh, <laughs> resources on the ground, but it's really not. <laughs> You're gonna spend it all and more. That's 29. I think that's enough. At least for the beacon or the lure. And we also have 16 spikes ready, so that's good. I'm pretty sure I remember that uh, for the first one we don't need guns and stuff like that, thankfully. So, stone goes in, beacon is crafted. This will be fun! <laughs> Just gonna grab it all. Okay, so little tip. Once you start making these events with the beacon, you might want to have empty bags. So I'm gonna try, and even though it's gonna take us some time or anything else for to look at, I'm still gonna do it because these guys uh, eventually will drop a lot of items and it will fill your bag. So instead of going back and forth and emptying, I might as well empty beforehand. Oh, we had so much stone here. Oh, never mind. I'm just gonna put all the mineral type stuff in here. 
and then maybe we're gonna keep hide in here rotten vegetables get tossed seeds and food get furthest away wheat rotten matter this was uh, minerals oh yeah that's it uh, hmm. but yeah and then have a box for items like that Rude oil put this in here take this out put it in here and put healing stuff there keep this one and shovel resin will go yeah sickle is damaged for now then we're just gonna drop the rotten stuff here it will despawn so it doesn't matter where you drop it okay. despawn disappears in five minutes which is fine good so i think i want to repair my spear just to be prepared wood and fiber So we don't come into any issues, and I like the spear because you can attack them. It it you know keeps them at a distance. So now we can do this. As I told in the previous episode, the beacon or the lure has to be a certain distance from the uh, the beacon. So as you can see here, it starts, but you no, know, keep it as far away as you can actually. I'm gonna try and place it really far away because the distance will provide you with the needed time to damage the creatures. And if you want to know why, can I place it here? Uh, it says it overlaps with my camp. So this is around here, right? So I guess this is... This will be it. And I could keep it up here, of course. The thing is... It's, it, it's, it'll get a bit technical when you haven't seen it. Again, it will explain itself a lot better when you see it. The way you're gonna build the maze will help you a lot if the ground is flat. Or the root to the beacon is flat. Uh, that's why I'm gonna place it here. That's fairly flat. And we're gonna take that stone away or let and try to make a maze. And the way the creatures work is they're gonna try and find the fastest uh, most direct way to the beacon. So if there was nothing here they were gonna run straight for it. So we're gonna try to uh, um, you know, influence their path a little bit. And I'm gonna do that with these guys. Because this will make them run into the wood barrier does the what's it called? Uh, it can be a bit fiddly to place them and you don't want to make the path too wide. Um because that will prevent them from going through it or hitting stuff. We gotta find that sweet spot. I think this is okay. Yeah, this looks like a good distance. And you're just gonna keep making that maze. Gonna place this so we don't get any openings either because we don't want them to sort of run out of the maze and uh, try to get to the beacon um, without hitting stuff. We're gonna keep this here. And you know, you can, if, if you want to have a better view, you can sort of flip around, you could also do it like come up here maybe, make it easier to see. Yeah, 
Yeah, might be BD. So we're gonna make it nice and tight. I'll try to at least. Like so. And then curve it back this way. I see it will you have will suffer a few openings, but that's okay. It's gonna be fine anyways. I'm gonna try and make a turn here. And actually, I find that the turns are where they damage themselves the most, because they can't, you know, they can't make a smooth circle around. They will uh, hit corners and stuff like that. Uh, we gotta do it from this side. Uh, I really want to get on top here because it's a bit clunky. This uh, building way. We're gonna make it like this. Just enough space to get through. Like so. That's a bit too wide there, maybe, but it's a little by the way. So. so can, as you can imagine, when they run here, they're gonna run, uh, uh, and then they're gonna die eventually, hopefully. At least that's the point of it. <laughs> We're gonna flip this to twist it twisted a bit here. go and and again if you're wondering why I'm doing this it's because you will not be able to take them on your own by hand even with a gun uh, you will lose a lot of events doing that if you do that so let's see Ah, uh, piddly. Is that enough? I really hope they're gonna kick by into this because that would be great. That would really damage them a lot. See, we're gonna make a turn pretty soon here. Just want to get it right. And you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it tight all the way. It'll just make it easier for you if you do. Let's see if we can make a turn here. Flip back on the uh, lure. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and encircle it a bit to prevent them from running around this way. And uh, the thing is, the way they spawn is they don't spawn like necessarily right here. They kind of spawn randomly out here and here. So you have to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room and make uh, the path, make an enclosure sort of, so they don't uh, go around. And if you're lucky, they will actually, they, sometimes they spawn on top of this and they just slowly die from the damage, which is also good. So we still have to, oh see, there's a lot of open space here, we really got to close this off. And I'm running out of spikes. We're gonna do this. And then we're gonna make more. We need rope, I think maybe 10 more, so 30 rope. Don't have any fiber. I know the time is running. I really want to show you this, so <laughs> don't want to cheat you, I promised, so let's just keep going until it's done. Okay, let's say we set 30, right? Uh, highlight 30. Oh. And what more do I need? Stones. We need one to make 10, that's 50, and 100, so that's good. Oh. Oh, nice. And if you're wondering, why are some of these red? The only thing I could really think it 
meant is that it's the items most previously built. But it does make sense because some of these are even newer, so... Yeah, I haven't really figured that out yet. Maybe it says that in the help files what it's all about, but yeah. It's not of any significance in terms of function, as far as I, I've uh, found out. Do I have enough to for five? Maybe just use the time constructively. I'm more bugged. Grab a few items. And like I said before, I've, I really like this part of the game, you know. That it, it can feel rushed if you choose to make it so, via these events, but... There's also enough time to, you know, go around and gather and just be in the, in the map. In the environment. So it's a nice balance, I think they've really found... A good balance here. Hopefully this game is gonna last as long as Rust, or even more so. I mean, it's, it's probably gonna have a lot of potential with the uh, Unreal Engine. So, did we finish? Oh yeah. So let's make 10. Uh, maybe get a bit of stone here. Let's see what, how we're using this iron shovel here, what it yields. A lot more, it's actually double up in... Almost double up compared to the stone uh, shovel. So, we might as well start building here. You know what, I think I might actually destroy this one. So you hold down F and you just click the garbage can and it falls apart. So we're gonna... because I think I can't swing around fast enough to make it work. I just wanna get one here. We get some damage going this little turn. And then sort of finish the enclosure. Uh, hopefully it will be wide enough time will tell to keep them inside our intended path if this was perfect I hope that won't matter let's do like that and then I found if you place a few you know random items here it will also help just doing random damage like so uh, they're gonna go this way, so we're gonna make something. Yeah. And as you see, they have a fairly um, big amount of overlap, or safe space, or what you want to call it, uh, that prevents us from facing it, which is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. I might have to do like that. So, if you see this from the outside, Creature lure is encased in spikes, and there's a bit of opening here. I hope it won't matter, but you know, we could just place another spike outside just to help ourselves a bit if we can, like right there. And then, of course, just make a little bit of a fence around here. You know, it's all about math for these creatures. So. Good. So, time to do it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press E to receive, and then receive. Ah. Oh, that's new. Let's see what happens. I don't know where it is, it finds obstruction. Let's see.
they uh, run into the stuff fairly fast. And they kind of kill themselves doing that. And for round one, it says up there how many enemies you have left. It's only two left, which is not a, a lot. They will die. These will die fairly easy. Whoops. She found a way. Doesn't matter. Ah! She still died. Good. Says victory. Now this, this seemed boring, right? <laughs> or at least not as, as exciting as I made it out to be. But this was just the first round. Trust me, it will get worse. So, we open again. This is all the stuff we get and see. We now get epic and we get exotic. And let's see, just for the last uh, part here. You can't press C because there's a timer going now. So you can do this around every 10 minutes after it's 16 minutes. If you fail the event, uh, the timer will not be as uh, long as 10 minutes. It will be like one and a half, two minutes where you get a new chance to fix your mistakes and repair and so on. Stock up on ammo and whatever you need. What? Oh, a little bunny. I think it ran into the spikes. <laughs> oh, there's an opening here, yeah. So, we just look at this stuff. This is probably because two guys or three guys died in the same spot, so they kind of bundle up. More items or more recipes. Oh, look at the bunnies. <laughs> well, since they're dead, we might as well skin them. Just to get the height, because we're gonna need leather, a lot of it, later on, so... And yeah, this is about it for this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And I hope you will uh, it will make you give this game a go. And hopefully I also will be open for some, you know, multiplaying this game at some point. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by and having a look. And uh, that's it for episode 3. Stay tuned for episode 4, where we get into more beacon events. And of course, uh, progress further down the tech tree. Now we can make rubber. Now we can make weapon bench. We got ergonomic grip that helps with stamina. We got torches and bigger boxes, which will, which will be nice. Vehicles, not yet. Gear bench enables us to make leather clothes. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to. And we'll also get into traps and stuff for helping us win the beacon events. So yeah, drop a like, follow, subscribe and so on. And uh, I'll see you again in episode 4. Thank you. Take care. Bye.